This morning, happy new month. God bless you. It will be a great month for us. The message we have enjoyed will increase. In Jesus' name. We are looking at the forbearance of God. The forbearance of God. The word forbearance means patient, self-control, restraint, and tolerance. It's amazing how easy is it for God to hand all this. As powerful, as advanced as human beings have become, their existentiality is very, very slim. If they can, it can almost hand. The Bible says that we are like a vapor. In other places say we are like grass or like flower that blooms and fades. So the earth has been established for thousands of years, not because it's, in, it's invincible, but because of the forbearance of God. In Nehemiah 9, 16 and 17, there is a Word the Bible always uses for God, and is that God is slow to anger. Nehemiah 9, verse 16 and 17. Glory to God. But they and our fathers acted proudly adding their necks and did not heed your commandments. Verse 17, they refused to obey. They were not mindful of your wonders that you did among them, but they added in their hearts and in their rebellion, they appointed a leader to return to their bondage. But you are a God ready to pardon, gracious and merciful, slow to anger, abundant in kindness, and did not forsake that. So we are not here for our actions. We are here for his own actions. His actions kept us. Our fathers were rebellious. But he is a God abundant in kindness. And ready to forgive. Praise the Lord. Psalm 145 verse 8. Psalm 145 verse 8 says the same thing about God. Please you need to rush. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. Is slow to anger and great in mercy. Sometimes when we hear the word that God is slow to anger, we think it means God never gets angry. That's not what the Bible says. God gets angry. You will not see God's anger. Say the amen very well. Amen. The only thing is that God is not that irritant. God is not that person that is easily, you know, walked up. God is slow to anger. Joel chapter 2, verse 13. Joel chapter 2, verse 13. Joel 2, 13. So rend your hearts and not your garment. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and he relents from doing harm. Nahum chapter 1 verse 3. Nahum chapter 1 verse 3. Just giving you scriptures. The Lord is slow to anger and great in power and will not at all acquit the wicked. Don't mistake God's slowness to anger to mean he will acquit wickedness. Are you following me? Wickedness will be judged. Good is good, wrong is wrong, evil is evil, and it will always turn out for such. Good will never become evil, evil will never become good. Are you following me? God can take time before it becomes very clear because he's slow to anger. And there's a reason why he's slow to anger. It's because God believes so much in you that you believe in yourself. God believes that you have the opportunity and the ability to make a change. God believes that there is an ability in you to turn around. Are you following me? That's why God does not mark all the errors you make. Because God said there is still good inside of you. And God is giving you time to prove it. And I want us, by the grace of God, to prove it. Are we, are we together? That there is so much good in us 
than all the mistakes and the errors that we do. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 9 and 10. Deuteronomy 7, 9 and 10. Therefore know that the Lord your God is God and faithful, the faithful God who keeps covenant and mercy for a thousand generations with those who love him and keep his commandments. Verse 10. He repays those who hate him to their face. So God loves, but God repays. Someone say God repays to their face. He repays people to their face. It will show you I am the one that is dealing with you. Even prophesies captivity before it happens. It's Israel, you've been captivity for seven years. So when you get to Babylon, don't think it is supernatural power or don't think it is because of military might. It is me that is judging you. Are you following me? He repays those who hate him to their face to destroy them. It will not be slack with him who hates him. It will repay him to his face. It will not be slack. Exodus 34, 6 and 7. Exodus 34, 6 and 7. Of you say, if God really does it that way, why is it that for a long time so much evil happens in the world and it's as if God is absent? Does it not look like that? Occasionally, when I look at this world, it doesn't look like God's world. It looks like the devil's world. It looks like sometimes the easiest way to make money in this world is to break all the rules. If you want to follow the rules, you take your time. It's as if it's the devil's world. Because God sometimes looks very slow. The Bible said, the Lord passed before him and proclaimed, the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abounding in goodness and truth. Verse 7. Keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, by no means clearing the guilty, visiting iniquity of the fathers upon the children and the children, children to the third and the fourth generation. He can keep a covenant for a thousand years and he can visit iniquity on four generations. It means that both are possible with him, but his highest and his best expression is his ability to keep what? Covenant and mercy. So this reminds me of one message I preached many years ago. I called it the, uh, the, the address of judgment is mercy. The mercy seat is the judgment seat. That's the same person that sits on the booth. Are you following me? Some people say, oh, Jesus is merciful, not judgmental. No. When you go to the judgment seat, and the, one of the beautiful things again is that the judgment seat, the one that sits on it is the mercy person. So when we stand in judgment, we receive mercy because we have believed in him. Are you following me? It's the same God who will not clear iniquity, but the same God who keeps mercy for a thousand generations. Amen. Now, we have a problem with... God's forbearance. Ecclesiastes 8 verse 11. What's our problem with God's forbearance? God restraint. Sentence against evil work is not executed speedily. And what does that do to us? Therefore, the art of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Judgment against evil. The Topo Shika. Eh? Uh -huh. So many good things would have spoiled before the evil one receives his judgment. Sentence against the evil work is not executed speedily. So people's work at are fully set in them to do evil. There is a quotation that says, Fools rush in, their angels fear. To tread. Fools rush in where angels fear to tread. Anybody that really knows God, know that as much as God is slow to anger, it is a very fearful thing to fall to God. Uh, people said, and if you sin against a man, Somebody can stand in for you. Sin against God. Amen. If you sin against a man and you bring five million, even if he doesn't like you, or you bring one billion. We smile there. 
That's all stupid. But I was thinking that well, well, we can see what we can do. So you are dealing with somebody that does not need to go to a market. So I don't know what you want to bring. It's actually a fearful thing to fall in the hands of God. But see, because God does not look like that, a lot of people assume that they can withstand God. In Acts 11 verse 17, when the church was standing against Peter and said, why did you go to the house of the Gentiles to eat and to preach? Peter said, if therefore God gave them the same gift as he gave us, when we believe on the Lord Jesus, who was I that I could withstand God? Somebody said, I can't withstand God. If you can withstand God here, yeah, let me see your hand. Only fools rush into the place where angels fear to tread. This God. Psalm 14 verse 1 said, The fool said in his heart, There is no God. To God show you that he exists. I was talking the book of Daniel said, He said, but that king that drank wine with the cups of, of, of God's temple. The Bible says he, he, he worshipped the God of gold and silver, but he did not fear the God who holds his breath. That the comparison. Without breath, where is gold? Without breath, where is investment? This is why God doesn't struggle for the things you are looking for. It's because the things that control them are first in his own hand. Are you following me? And I thank him because he has given us the breath. So the Bible says, the fool said in his heart, there is no God. Who am I that I can withstand God? Even in Acts chapter 5, Verse 38 and 39. Even Gamaliel that was not born again won the church, won the Sanhedrin when they wanted to arrest the apostles. He said, I said to you, keep away from this man and let them alone. If this plan or this work is of men, it will come to nothing. Verse 39. But if it is of God, you cannot overthrow it lest you be found to fight against God. Who is powerful here that can fight against God? There are people who have tried it. They will, I will, I will close that church. Uh, some people say that man. I will never allow him to rise. Uh, that's possible if God is not behind him. But some of you are very powerful fighters. Some of you, you ban your job fifteen years. So there are people that even pride themselves in such things. I can hold the grudge for twenty years and it's still fresh. No producing Johnny Law. No, those type of attitude. I need to recruit you because I have a battle with God. Eh? Can you fight God? Funny thing is that you, you, you what what weapon will you even force use to fight it? Isaiah 27, verse 2 to 5. Isaiah 27, verse 2 to 5. The Bible says, in that day sing to her a vineyard of red wine. Hide the Lord, keep it. I water it every moment, lest any ought it. I keep it night and day. Fury is not in me. Who will set briars and thorns against me in battle? I will go through them. I will burn them together. See, thorns are powerful until they meet fire. Don't touch that tree. Yes. Thorns. But when you want to really deal with tongues, you just be hearing cracking sound. See, you are only as powerful as when you are dealing with what is within your realm. When you are dealing with something that is outside of your realm, you have no such power. Look at what God said. He said, or oh, let him take hold of my strength that he may make peace with me. There are some peace in life that is not necessarily resolution, it is truth. What's the difference between resolution and truth? Resolution can mean you really settle the difference. Truth can mean sometimes you discover that you hold on to something and because of that thing, I have to make peace with you. So God said, let him take hold of my strength. Because if you are, you know, if you are fighting, there are some people when they are fighting, there are some areas that if they hold you, that's the end of the fight. There is still anger inside of you, but there is truth. Don't get to that place. You know those type of things. So God is saying, okay, is there something you can use to hold me that will force me to make peace with you? Let him make peace with me and he shall make peace with me. Is there no way to hold truth with him? 
Proverbs 22 verse 3. I'm, I'm saying a lot of things for background. Proverbs 22 verse 3. The Bible says, A prudent man foresees evil and hides himself, but the simple person and they are punished. Only fools tread where angels fear to tread. A prudent man foresees evil, but the fool. Let me tell you something. As fearful as it is to fall into the hands of God, there are people who don't send him. Have you seen people say, if it's God, let him curse me now. Let him kid me now. No, I did before. And you know, if you or die, not die. A hey, man die, nine die. Go die. I go cause you know. Bible says the simple. When you hear the word simple, it's not a good word. And Bible says the simple. It's the fool. His mind is one way. He does not think twice. Just talks. Have you seen people that they are finished talking before they remember that? What am I saying? <laughs> they are the simple. That same word is said in Proverbs twenty-seven verse twelve. The simple person and they are. Punished. Revelations 9, 20 and 21. Revelations 9, 20 and 21. Please do quick. But the rest of mankind who are not killed by these plagues, they have experienced plague, did not repent. How many of you feel like the type of crisis we've seen in the world is enough Make everybody think twice. Did the earthquakes? Should there still be somebody in Gaza sinning? Huh? After the bombs have dropped, every day of his life he says, Hey, Lord, I woke up today. I don't know tomorrow. But do you know there are still sinners there? After this place, men did not repent of the work of the hand, they, that they should not worship demons, idols of gold, silver, brass, stone, wood, which can neither see, nor hear, nor walk. They did not repent of their mothers or sorceries. You know in Gaza, people are still checking other people's wives in the midst of war. You don't understand sin. People can be in the midst of, you can be in a hospital bed and still commit fornication. Uh, I don't know what I'm talking about. They don't know whether tomorrow is sure. Oh, I'm going to go die now. <laughs> they did not repent of their mothers or sorceries or their sexual immorality or their theft after the plagues. Look at Revelation 16, verse 8 and 9. Revelation 16. The fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun. Power was given to him to scorch men with fire. Men was caught with great heat. And what was the result? They blasphemed the name of God who has power over these plagues. And they did not repent and give him glory. They are you. In iniquity. With some of you, the things you have seen in this world, if you hear God, you tremble. After some time, you say, well, you rationalize it. And you know, even when we see Bad things happen to evil people who are doing what we are doing. What do we say? Jealous. Eh? Have you had people say things like that? It happens, but not me. They are not talking by faith. That's why Papa will sharp that at me. Uh, how did he allow himself to enter that type of thing? But Matthew will from afar. <laughs> the person that does not even see what is beside him. Just because of one thing, does not want to repent. Even with the great evil that is saying, that is the heart of man. Romans eleven thirty three to thirty six. Hold the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and the knowledge of God. How unsearchable are His judgment and His ways past finding. Who has known the mind of the Lord? Who has become His counselor? Who has first given to him that he should be repaid? Who does God owe heir? Who loaned God anything here? You know that if somebody, if you owe somebody, it will be your best behavior. If your 
Uh, what do you call it? Creditor comes to you. Some of you, the way you greet your landlord. Because you just don't want to go through the stress of agents. <laughs> Even though when you enter there, say, nonsense. Now, I of him. Kind of kill At that point, you see, because <laughs> you are at His mercy. Anybody that, if God is at your mercy, then God is to be at His best behavior. Who has loaned to Him that He needs to repay? For of Him and through Him and to Him are what all things. He never everything exists from Him by Him. He never needs anybody to get anything. Everybody needs him to get all things. In other words, there is nothing we can hold on to to put God. In other words, should when God sees those type of attitude of people that refuse to repent, it should not be hard for God to say, can, let's say it's over. God is so full of resources. God looked at Moses and said, Moses, step aside. Let me wipe out these people and start with you. You know what God was saying there? I want to wipe out all the Abraham story, Jacob, the Isaac, Joseph in Egypt. That's about a thousand years. It didn't cause God to wipe out a thousand years and start. Some of you lost three years. You are still crying. It's everlasting. Are you following me? Can, do you know God can start this entire process called the heart again without a loss? There are six billion people say I created them. I can create six billion in one day. I can, I can start it all over at once. And in case you forgot, the first man was not a baby. <laughs> Who is the mother of Adam? In the other words, you that needed to go through primary school, secondary school, God can, could have said, appear. And you appear. You get what I'm saying? So it, it, it has no such restraint. But what restrains him? This is forbearance. Romans 2, verse 1 to 6. What restrains the Lord? Therefore, you are inexcusable, O man. Wherever you are, wherever you are, who judge. And whatever you judge another, you condemn yourself. For you who judge practice the same things. That's why I said sometimes when you see things happen to people, you say, well, be drunk. But you know your heart, that you yourself do what they do. The only thing is that for one reason you don't experience what they experience. And you think because you don't experience what they experience, it means there's some special sharpness. You know what I'm saying? That you have. Have you known in life that sometimes what you are falling into seven times and risen again is what some people fell into once and that was the end. You must be a cut of many lives. Is that? Oh, no, no, no. Show me the way. Show me how to fall and rise. Hmm? The Bible says, uh, Mephibosheth, the son of, uh, what do they call him? The son of uh, Jonathan. On the day of, of battle, he fell down from, his, from the person who carried him. And he became lame. His lifetime. How many times have you fallen? Remember when FC Bar was a baby? One day I was in one of play. She was not up to three months. That's very young. I just don't know. I just threw her up and I lost her. She came down, face down. On hard floor. Right. But she's walking. Some people. Did you hear in the Bible that there was a king that fell down from his upper chamber? 
<laughs> and he was asking, will I recover from this? Because he said, you have, that bed you have gone to, you are not coming down from it. <laughs> Oh my God. When you carry your head, feet on the bed, it is not automatic that you put it down. Are you following me? Hmm. He has kept your sleeping and waking. He has kept your going out and coming in. It's his mercy. Are you following me? But we know that the judgment of God according to truth is according to truth against those who practice such things. And do you think, oh man, you would judge those practicing such things and doing the same, that you will escape what? The judgment of God. Do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance, and long-suffering, and not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to what? So when God is not exercising himself in certain ways with you, as he did with some other people, it's not because you are special. Or because you have a, an intelligence of escaping the errors of wrong. It's because God is giving you a rope that is called forbearance that leads you to what? To repentance. Yeah, thank you. Verse 5 and 6. But in accordance with your hardness and impenitent heart, you are treasuring up for yourself wrath in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God who will render to each one according to his deed. So sometimes forbearance can pile up repentance or can build up wrath. Because the more you are holding back, that's why I told you, slow to hunger does not mean does not get angry. Are you following me? What are you doing with God's forbearance today? Are you repenting or piling up? Wrath? What are, ask your neighbor, what are you doing with God's forbearance? Oh, somebody has never needed God's forbearance. You've always done everything right. You know what I'm talking about. You, you, you have an overdraft with God. God, God, even what has not happened, you are paid for it. Who is that? Who is that? For me, even this morning. I've needed God's forbearance. And I'm going to make sure that I utilize it properly. Hallelujah. And God has an history of long suffering and forbearance with man. First Peter chapter 3, verse 17 to 20. First Peter 3, verse 17 to 20. The Bible says it is better if it is the will of God to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered once for sins, just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit. By whom he went and preached to the spirits in prison, who formerly were disobedient. When once the divine long-suffering what, waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was being prepared, the ark that saved people did not appear overnight. The ark took a period of time for preparing. The decision that the end of all flesh had come, but the action of it was not instant. Are you following me? God said the end of all flesh has come, but and they had decided, but he now called a man who found grace and told the man to build the ark. And the ark was such a very massive building that it took time. And the Bible explained all those processes as what? The divine long-suffering of God. And at the end of that long-suffering, because people don't take advantage of it, the Bible says it's only eight souls. There is something about man that despises God's forbearance. They have a way of, because some people dispute that maybe it took over 100 years even to build the ark. The ark was not a three weeks project. The ark was a project because the, the Bible started the story of, 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 of uh, what do you call his name? Noah, when he was 500 years old, that was in Genesis chapter 5, verse 38 to verse. verse 28 to 32. Genesis 5, 28. Lamech lived 182 years, had a son. Called his name Noah, saying, This one will comfort us concerning our work, the toil of our hands. 
because of the ground which the Lord had caused. He begot Noah, Lamech lived 595 years and had sons and daughters. All the days of Lamech were 777 years and he died. Noah was 500 years old and Noah begot Shem, Ham, and Japheth. So before God even started the issue of the end of all flesh had come, Noah had clogged 500 years. Are you following me? And when you look at Genesis 6, verse 3, Genesis 6, verse 3, the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever. For it's indeed flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. Go to verse 5. The Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of his thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth. He was grieved in his heart. The Lord said, I would destroy man from whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Hallelujah. And you know, from verse 9, the Lord told Noah to go and make a hack, you know. And um, Noah, was, Noah was a just man. God told Noah, continue. God looked upon the eye, the deed was corrupt. All flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. And God said to Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them. Behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make yourself an ark. Decision was already taken. Decision was executable at that moment. Are you following me? But there was something called what? Divine long suffering. If some of us, if they open our eyes and see decisions that have been hanging, you remember that for Nebuchadnezzar to become a man that ate grass, decision was taken at least one year before he entered the decision. Because the Bible says he had had a dream and he saw in that dream that a great tree was cut down. And that the tree was wet with water from heaven. And, and, and I said, I don't understand. And Daniel said, hmm. The Bible said, for one hour, Daniel did not talk. Go read your Bible. And after an hour, Daniel said, this dream is to your enemy. I said, what is the dream? Tell me. <laughs> the king will become an animal. You will eat grass. Uh, seven seasons will pass over you. There is a decree of the holy watchers. What you said, tell but this is what you can do. This is what you can do. Maintain your days. Please refrain from doing evil. After 12 months, that means that word was following him. It's called divine restraint. 12 months was following him. One day he just said, ah, Is this not Babylon that my hand has got? The Bible said, And the word fell. Sometimes, sometimes some things are hanging over people. He's just waiting for something to trigger it. One of them will just go on a, on, 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 on a uh, what do you call it, on a campaign and say things like, I, 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 I will change your life. And God say, I've been looking for something stupid you will be saying. If you don't believe me, go and read the book of Acts of Apostles chapter 12. Herod that killed James, had arrested Peter. You understand? And when he killed James, there was no reaction. When he arrested Peter, God had to deliver Peter. Peter had to hide. And somebody killed God, the apostle, and God did nothing. Well, do you know how God that got him? One day, that's nothing to do with church. He started fighting church, but the judgment did not come from church. See, listen, you don't understand God. You think God has to use church people to deal with you when you are reacting to church people. No, you don't understand. One day, the men of Tyre, <laughs> men of Tyre just came to him because the men of Tyre, his community was feeding them. The Bible said they set an oration. And because those people, the Bible said those people even had to hire an orator. And when the orator looked at him and, and he wanted to give speech. It's all. God not judge you. God not allow you to set up a parade to, to fall in the eyes of the nations. Is <laughs> it how this is? You will think you are planning your own glory. It will be before everybody. And you are like our president. What's uh, yeah, your you, you plan? You wrote, you built a portrait. 
giant portrait. Guys, we will we, we not remember that day for portrait. Ochubu. You don't know. Who do you think you are dealing with? A man? Bible says when the, when he was given the oration, those people say, "He says he carry that gift." They come. One night he wash us by. Give peace to our people. Don't give peace; you will not have. Hey. The people kept shouting, "This is the voice of God, not the voice of a man." And immediately, an angel of the Lord struck him. Maybe some of you, this is the way you spend your next salary that God has been waiting for. I've been telling you. I thank God, God has better plans for you. I say, God has better plans for you. You know, it's time with him. But if you read Genesis 7, verse 1 to 6, you discover that Noah entered the ark when he was 600 years old. So that was a long suffering. By the time God told Noah to come, give me verse 6. Noah was 600 years old when the flood waters came on the earth. So the story started when he was 500. So for at least... Why did people despise Noah that much? Hebrews 11, verse 7 told us that he was, he was preparing the ark. When there was no rain, he prepared the ark. He was warned of things not yet seen. Why do people despise the forbearance of God? Because what God is about to do is not clearly evident. Because you think God needs evidence to be true. It is you that needs to see for something to be real. God, when he says the end of all flesh has come, it is decided and it is already real. Are you following me? But you are telling him, show me. You have not seen that enormous rain that we require them to what? To build an ark. But the Bible says, Noah was moved with godly fear. May the fear of God walk in our hearts. He was moved with godly fear. He prepared an ark for the saving of his household. Glory to God. You know? If you read Second Peter chapter two from verse four, you see the same experience. Second Peter chapter two, from verse four, God did not spare the angels who sinned, or cast them down to hell and deliver them. Say, sin always has consequences, whether it's in the angelic realm or in the earthly realm. God did not spare angels who sinned, but cast them down to hell, deliver them into the chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment. And they did not spare ancient world, but save Noah, one of eight people, a preacher of righteousness, bringing the flood on the world of the ungodly. He turned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes. Said, if God does not judge this world, God has to, God has to end an apology to Sodom and Gomorrah. Some, we're in the world that sometimes there's a base in the Western world that the easiest way to steer your base is to tell them you will give them right to marry their sex. It's not a political campaign. A love, you have a free right to choose what love is. Who, who you want to be with. And everybody say, yes! The impl father's implication of that statement is that they are not talking about when you see a lady that you like. That you have a right to do. I even see an animal. The love is love. No magic. I can love you. How can you love a goat and say love is love? Ah, that's the world you are living in. And you know what? They are winning elections by it. And do you know why they are winning elections? Divine. Yeah. I pile up. There are certain civilizations and powers that lose their power before you go to be in this lifetime. I hope you know America was not always this powerful. I hope you know America became world power after 1945. Great Britain had more power than America. Today, Great Britain followed. America has this great Britain. Say, yes, sir. That is at the rise of China. Right in their face. Those ones don't talk. 
They are the ones controlling Africa. Russia is back. The two protests, we don't the wave Russian flag. No crown endures forever. Nations fall when debauchery and, and self-indulgence become their. That's how Rome fell. Homosexuality broke out. Everybody's eye misbehaving. It has always been the enemy's way of destroying empires. Are you still with me? Indulgence. So, but see, but it was not the day God took these decisions that they happened. Look at Second Peter chapter three from verse three. So it's been consistent in history from the angels to Noah to Lot that there is a time called the time of divine what long suffering. But it always climaxes in the fact that after divine long suffering comes judgment. Are you following me? And as it is true then. So it is true now. The scriptures were written to give us examples and to show us that whatever is happening in our time is not new. There's one story I want to preach to, and I've not entered it. Taking too much time. I want to preach on Absalom. Knowing this first, that the that scoffers will come in the last days, walking in their according to their own lust. How will you know them? They say, Where is the promise of his coming? Lumber, lumber, lumber. Every time you are going through problems, say, don't worry. I know my God will stand for me. Say, God will stand for you. Heaven helps. Oh, low, oh, low. Oh, man. Yeah, Every time they are telling you that, and do you know what they want you to do? They want you to wash. They don't want you to have divine long suffering. Something in you tells you, ah, I'm losing something, I'm losing something. Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things, they, all things continue as what? Like by losing job out. All things continue as what? It is people that say, I'm local, I'm and you are beginning to say, I want to conceal. Eh? All things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. For this, they will willfully forget that the word of God, by the word of God, the heavens were of old, and they had standing of, out of water and in water. And with the world that then existed perished, being flooded with water. For the heavens and the earth, which are now preserved by the same word, are reserved for fire unto the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But beloved, do not forget one thing. Tell your neighbor, if you, if, you, if you forget anything, don't forget this one thing. That with the Lord, one day is as a thousand years. And a thousand years is as one day. So when you are so worked up many a times, God is still at rest. Because one day, it's as a thousand years. Continue. The Lord is not slack. A concerning his promise, as some count what? This she alone was slack. They will give you 1979 paper about Kumi. Nigerians. We just believe things will get better. They will bring out 2024 paper. And some things you just say, Oh, let me know, man of God. Will. That's what they've been telling us since. They will show you 1987 paper where somebody say, This new year will be better. Then one day you say, Oh, that's, that's how they deceive my father's generation. They are bringing the deception to me now. Eh, can you walk? The Lord is slack. And the Bible said the Lord is not slack. Because that is what I saw can't slackness, but it's what? Long suffering towards us. See, how many of you will thank God that as angry as this system is, God has not found it in his wisdom to make it degenerate to Somalia. 
Because sometimes we have all the signs. I was reading the newspaper early this morning or somewhere, and I saw uh, one of the bandits, he seized army convoy in San Fala State and took their weapons. At the day, of He seized army convoy. See, when someone that will seize an army convoy is not carrying the gun. It means if that guy wants to invade a state in Nigeria, he has it. There are warlords springing up every nook and cranny of our nation. What is holding back this destruction? The divine long May we respond well. Amen. May our nation respond to God's long suffering. Amen. The Lord is not about this long suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish. I would I even stay there. If somebody tells you to count the grain, count the bags of rice, and for any not to fail. You'd, how many of you know that when you buy rice, you already plan that you are not going to eat everything? Any, any, any wicked man that tells you every grain in this rice, I must eat, is sending you to punishment. You yourself know that the pot must eat some, cockroaches must eat some. If you are not careful, rats or eat some, the ground must eat. You, you, you make provision, but you just believe that. And so sometimes when you come back, we just finish a bag of rice, and it's a lie. I just want to tell you, you did not. <laughs> there are so many other tribu that God used you to supply. <laughs> Hallelujah. But when somebody is meticulous to say, not any, life is designed in such a way that many times we feel we have won if we compare the losses not to be as great as the gain. So Nigeria can say we won a war. It does not mean we did not lose soldiers. But you can say we lost 3,000, but we wiped that. And you, people will still go and rejoice. And say we will take care of your families. But God he has a higher standard. God's standard is that it does not want any to perish. That is meticulous. But that all, someone say all, should come to repentance. All. Yeah? Continue, let's go. But the day of the Lord will come. So after God has exercised this long suffering, what will still happen? The day of the Lord will come. After the ark had been built for that length of years, the flood will come. Don't mistake the slowness of anger to mean the absence of it. Jesus is coming back and he will judge you and me. I know you don't sense it in the atmosphere. The reason why you don't sense it is God is giving you a chance to make up. The day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with great noise. The elements will melt with fervent heat. Though the earth and the works that are in it will be burnt up. Tell your neighbor, including your house. Including your car. All of you who thought that, ah, I'm there now. Have you met a candle before? Candle is an illusion. That's how those things are. May you and I be able to comprehend and agree. And it's not easy. Say, ah, he lame me. Lame me. Yeah, that can't be. Or 50. I want to my little one. Oh, she said, I want to call her. She said, I want to call Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be what? In holy conduct and godliness. Looking and haste for and hasting the coming day of the Lord, because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, the elements will melt with fervent heat. 
Nevertheless, according to his promise, we look for a new heavens and new earth in which righteousness dwells. Uh, give me 14 and 15. Let me stop there. Therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things, be diligent to found the name in peace with our spot and blameless. Consider that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. So if you look at verse 9 and verse 15, that truth was mentioned twice. In verse 9, it said, it's long suffering towards us, not willing for any to what? Perish. Verse 15 said, the long suffering of our God is what? Is salvation. Let me. So the Bible is full of it. When Paul was preaching in Lystra, where he raised a man that had been lame in Acts 14, 8 to 18, and they wanted to worship him and sacrifice to him. Paul said, these are the same things we are telling you to turn away from. He said, these times of ignorance. How did he put it? Give me verse 6, verse 15. Why are you doing these things? Then? These things, we are also men of the same nature with you. I'm pretty to you that you turn from these useless things to the living God who made the heaven and the earth, the sea, and all things that are in them. In bygone generations, what did he do? Say what he allowed what all nations to walk in their what yeah. there is a time when you are doing your nonsense. God is a jam machine. Nevertheless, he did not leave himself without witnessing that he did good, gave us rain from heaven. With fruitful season, filling our heart with food and gladness. And with these sayings, he restrained the multitudes from sacrifice. There was a time he allowed. In Acts 17, in 8, verse 22 to 31, he said the same thing. He said, In this format, he said, All these things God had overlooked. The times when we worship idols, worship gold, worship silver. God, did God, how did God make up for it? God just what? Overlooked, but now ended. He said, But now he commands every man everywhere to repent. In verse um, 29, therefore, since we the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone, something shaped by art and man's devising. Truly, these types of ignorance, what did God do? He also overlooked, but but what. Now, say but now. So that, that he overlooked does not mean he's incapable to do anything about it. A man can write off your debt. It does not mean it is good to be in debt. Don't be looking for debt canceling anointing so that you can become a debtor. You say, ah, when I went to that church, that person said, your debt is canceled. I told Jamie, <laughs> only devil. Looking for death, cancelling anointing. There is a time he overlooked, but now he commands everybody everywhere to repent. Praise the Lord. Say the Lord is not slack. There was a time in David's life, in Second Samuel 11, when David became so powerful. The Bible says kings go to battle, and David stayed at home and sent Joab. And you know the story, David was walking on the stairs one evening and he saw a woman, a king, a woman. That's not just, that's not man to man, that's power to powerless. He said, well, they inquire, it's called certain officials. Who is that? Well, and there are some people that will always be telling you when there's power. Ah, come on. Ah. It's right, so I said, go and bring her. And they brought her. And he slept with her. One strange thing about this story is that I didn't see any place where the Bible said God reacted. David, nothing happened. David did not feel bad. The only thing that made David know something was bad was when the lady sent to David and said, I'm with child. He said, okay, what do we do to solve this problem? Have you seen that David had not broken down? David just sent for the husband, said, tell the husband to come. When the guy came, David said, oh, that is a battle. Uh, uh, all he wants him to do is, uh, if it is the woman I saw that is your wife, oh, le lo, le go guada. You know those type of things? And he told him, 
Then he said, go. And the Bible says he filled him with so much, you know? Riah departed from the king's house. A gift of food followed from the king, followed him. Riah slept at the door of the king's house. Did you discover until this point, have you seen God in this story? It's called divine long of. Then the next day, I thought at that moment something should strike David. This is the symbol of faithfulness. David said, every man has his pride. They loaded him the next day, drunk. Raya did not go. Then David called and said, why didn't you go? Said, and the man spoke a powerful sermon to David. He said, how will I go and lie beside my wife when the ark of God is in the field? One thing that struck me is that all through this time, David was not hearing. You know what? Sometimes in life, when you are so bogged down with your intentions, it takes so much time for God to eat you. You can be listening to a sermon that is speaking and crying over your head that you will not hear it. Because you are so occupied with your intention. You can love a woman so much that you will want to die with her. Even when you know death is there. Yeah. He said, Adam loved Eve so much he died with her. Jesus loved the church so much he died for her. You can become a Romeo and Juliet. You know it's your sister. And what did he do again? He now wrote a letter. He sent it to, to Joab. He said, when you get to the field, send this man on the hottest part of the battle. Let everybody withdraw. Said King David. Say King David. The psalmist. And I've never, God did not talk. And they sent the man to battle. We drew from the man. The man died. Then the, Joab sent another man to David. He said, tell him that uh, this is how the boy is fearing. And if he's angry, just tell him Raya is dead. And when they told David Raya is dead, David said, don't worry. Just tell him, let the people regroup. Let them regroup. Let them regroup. You know? The battle kills one or two people, but you get what I'm saying? The Bible says it was at that junction the messenger said to them, surely the men prevailed against us. They came out to us in the field. Then we drove them back as far as the entrance of the gate. The archers shot from, from the wall at your servant. Some of your king's servants are dead. The most important thing. And your servant Raya the Hittite is dead also. What was David's reaction? David said to the messenger, thus you shall say to Joah, do not let this thing displease you. For the sword divorced one as well as another. Strengthen your attack against the city. Overthrow and so encourage him. When the wife of Raya had that Raya husband was dead, she mourned for her husband. And when her mourning was over, David sent, brought her to his house. She became his wife, bore him his son. But the thing that David had done, there was a God who never spoke throughout, but does not mean there was no sin. When you have absolute power, you can do some things. Call the bluff of no person, and sometimes nothing will react in the air. It will not look like there is a consequence. It was so, David never felt it was anything was wrong. How did I know? Because in the next chapter, for God to even get David, God had to send a parable. God, a prophet, approached David, called Nathan. The last time David saw Nathan, David received a promise. Of everlasting covenant from him. When God told David, I will not just, you will not build me a house, I will build you a house, your son after you. That was what Nathan so, represents to David. So when David sees a Nathan, there's nothing to fear. And Nathan told him, David, you know there are two people in one city, one is rich and another is poor. And David said, Hey, bring bring me the information. How can you do so much evil without not perceiving it? You get what I'm saying? Nothing in the atmosphere. Nobody condemned. Did you see and all Israelites? Some people are not talking huge stones. But Obashio. David attacked the boxes with men. Then the man told David, he said, There was a rich man in your city. He has, he has so many animals. Then there is one poor man. He has one small 
lamp and when a visitor came to the rich man the rich man went to take the small lamp and cook it for his visitor and then he said in this city ah he said as the man leave, the lord leave the man will surely done this thing shall surely die see the reason even at this moment there was a self-righteousness in david it takes God so much sometimes to break through us until we come into consciousness that there are certain things we are doing that are not right. Tell me the truth. You can be so occupied with your own ways and you will never see the truth of what God is saying to you. And he said, David said, it will restore fourfold. I've told you, David did. Four of his children died. Child that that woman gave birth to died. Absalom died. Amnon died. Adonijah died. He restored for food. All of you will judge any other. As is that do it. Kill us. Hey, be careful. If I was pastor, I would never allow God to say, My worry. My worry. My pastor, Dada. In such a way, you will never be able to escape. <laughs> I didn't see anything. I saw somebody warned his wife. So go there. He will stop off phone because he did this thing because he had no pity. And the man now turned to David and said, You are the man. How have I passed judgment before you know I'm the one you are talking to? David said, Ah, I have seen. And the man, and God said, I gave you your master's wives. That's one funny thing. He said, even if it was even too little, I will still give you more. It's only that one you want. God said to David, you did your own in secret. I will do my own. Say, God said, I will do my own. <laughs> See? You have taken his wife to be, you have killed him with the sword of the people of Amnon. Yes? Give me the next verse. Who is there? Now, therefore, the sword will never depart from your hands because you have despised me. I have taken the wife of Rad Ittite to be your wife. I will raise, I will raise adversity against you, and and I will take your wives before the eyes of them, before your eyes, and give them to your neighbor. He shall lie with your wives in the sight of the sun. Shall be what? We are all the same. I will do it. Before everybody, Lord, I'm, I'm a sinner. Because I forgive. For you to know this God you are dealing with is not that simple. God now said, and that child will die. David prayed. <laughs> you know what? When God's love suffering is working in your life, you think you are prayerful. All on coffee, we will So David said, ah. So, when you see people that say, if you only take me seven days fasting, there is nothing you can pray through if God does not want to answer. Nothing. Go to 75 mountains. David prayed. David did not eat. The elders of his community said, King, you will die. David said, no. God did not move. The God who did not talk an entire chapter became the God you could not move with all your crying. Yeah, it's a fearful thing to fall into God's hand. All of them buy so by bow. As the day might come when the Bible says, He so sought for the blessing with tears and He did not find it. And the Bible says, He so sought for the blessing with tears and He did not find it. And the Bible says, He so sought for the blessing <laughs> David cried. The child died. The elders could not talk to David. They said, Ah, when this child was sick, David was almost there. If we tell you the child is there. When the child died, David said, Give me food. He said, What type of man are you? David said, Oh, Lord, she is the beautiful thing about God. Is that his anger has restraint. Because the Bible said that same woman 
called Bathsheba, at the end of that chapter, became pregnant, and the Lord sent Nathan to tell David, that child that is that woman, his name is Jedidiah, is beloved of God. Before the child was born, there was a child David prayed through for. Hello, bro. There was one he had not prayed about. And God has started speaking. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? What do you think he is? What can you hold on to God to make truth with him, to force him to a position? If we have mercy on women, we have mercy and compassion on women, we have compassion. And it is not you that determines it. There is no when God is acting with us, it is his nature, not our wisdom. After that day, David became very careful. And the carefulness now was being perceived as slackness. Because in 2 Samuel 14, I'm rushing, David's first son raped his own sister. But I started. Where is God going? All those judgment. One thing. Your own wives will be left with in the sight of all men. Started something in the corner. I'm bringing it up. I will start judgment too from the corner. When the son rapes his own sister. Have I jumped? Oh, sorry. The second Psalm was 13. Go to verse 23. Back up to 22, let me see. Twenty-one. I want to pick some. When David had these things, it was what? Question is that all David should do? It was what? Somebody will look at David. You were by Yahweh. You had your son read your sister, and all you did was what? Young. Look at the next verse. Absalom spoke to his brother, I'm not neither good nor bad. Who looks like the one that was in control? In fact, if you read, I think verse 20, Absalom told his sister, yeah, she be some known that's left with you, buddy. This is where. Hold your peace. He's your brother. Take it to heart. David was angry. Absalom was coming. Who will you fear? Yeah. Sometimes it's good to have somebody who speaks. Yeah, David was angry. Absalom was there. He was your brother. You will perceive nothing in dress about Absalom. That so much Amnon will go to a feast organized by Absalom. <laughs> Cause for, and if you know how dangerous Absalom, two full years he didn't talk. But he had decided from that day. That's a dangerous man. After two full years, Absalom now had sheep shares and he went to David. I want people to come. I want them to enjoy David said, ah, the state matters will not allow me. He said, okay, don't worry, let Amnon come. And David said, why? And they didn't give him answer, but David said, okay. And he called this man. When you see Amnon drunk, kill him. Amnon and Uriah open. Kill him. Don't be afraid, I'm the one that is commanding you. The man that did not talk for two years. But held so much in his heart. It's not divine long suffering. This is the vengeance of man. Sometimes when God is shouting, he's long suffering. Because he's trying to say it so that there can be adjustment. The day God keeps quiet on you, but I'm praying. All the things you used to do before that, when you do it, your heart will strike you. Now you do it. No bombs anymore. 
autobahn. No speed limit. You will be close to crash. You know the story. He killed him. But that's not even my issue. If you go to verse 38 and 39, after that has happened, Absalom fled and went to Geshaw and was there for three years. King David longed for Absalom, for he has been comforted concerning Amnon because he was what? Dead. David became somebody that started longing for a murderer. Because David understands that it's long suffering that gives people chance of repentance. That God who did not kill him when he was conceiving about Bathsheba. The God who did not kill him when he slept with Bathsheba. The God who did not kill him when he was trying to deceive Uriah. The God who did not kill him when he killed Uriah. The God who did not kill him but killed his child. The, are you following me? David said, I'm only here today for somebody held power under restraint. David became a man that was holding power under restraint. The problem is why when you meet people that hold power under restraint, you call them slack. That's why you think God is slack. Just thinking. One day in 2 Samuel 14, Joab saw that the king was thinking about Absalom. So he sent a woman. The woman came to David and said, I have two sons, oh. And the two sons were fighting. And one killed the other one. What is the law? The murderer must die. But see, <laughs> those who don't understand mercy apply law blindly. Some, some, some of our House of Red members are writing the laws that will send them to prison. Soon. All the people you know, she, hey, don't call. Anybody says anything on social media, it should be. Don't worry. One of them has become Kennedy on Twitter now. I won't mention his name. But send it on the agenda. So a few months ago, yeah. He has the, he has the mind power. That man will not come to power. I'm telling you, he has touched a very dangerous thing in this country. I said it when he was obnoxious with this president. I said it. I told him, I said, he will not come. He nominated him for minister. They reject. One man rejected him. I will tell you about more so you worry me. What he has done a grievous thing. Do you know how many Christians were killed in Kaduna in his eight years? That's good. This does not talk. Think he can open up joint political power. Join three political parties. If you will not rise, they are dealing with God. Don't count his long suffering as black. I won't call. A man was winning an election in Nigeria on Saturday. He was to announce him on Sunday. He died Saturday night. What did I tell him? I don't know. I know. Debe, Debe. I don't But for me and you, his mercy will be abundant. He said the amen like thunder now. When is one minute for you to miss his mercy will show up? That is your own portion. There will be a way for you where there is no way. That is your own portion. In the mighty name of Jesus. So the woman went to David and said, you know what? My son killed his, son, uh, his brother. He said, if they kill him, I'll be a widow. Or be. David said, I will give instruction that nobody should touch your son. To somebody, this king is slack. He's not fighting for justice. But David knew that is the person you overlook things for that has another chance. So then the woman has said, so why are you not bringing back Absalom? <laughs> ah. David said, okay, it's Joab that sent you, have you? David said, okay, let him come. Don't let him see my face. Can a man murder his brother and David still tells him, let him come. See, but when you are in Absalom, you are always you, you are never satisfied. So Absalom said, the next uh, the next chapter, I think Absalom said, 
He just told Joab, said, Joab, I want to see you. Joab said, no, I'm not coming. I've tried. We are back. And when he didn't believe it, he sent men to set fire in Joab's field. It is still in chapter 14. And Joab said, why did you do that? He said, tell the king. He said, he wants to see me or he does not want to see me. If he wants to see me, let him kill me by himself. After a lot of interaction, David brought Absalom back. I mean, that's chapter 14 towards the, the last two verses. David brought Absalom back. Let him return to his own house, but let, let him see. But Absalom returned to his own house, but did not see the king's face. All is read. There was no one so much praise as Absalom. In somewhere, I think it's chapter 15, Absalom did that thing. And David was forced to see Absalom. And everything happened as if Absalom had not done anything. Absalom forced his way. Absalom even forced his way back to seeing the king. If Absalom was wise, just being allowed to leave and to come back was sufficient. But Absalom is never satisfied. He's a lustful spirit. He's covetous. He never wants. So in chapter 15, Absalom set us seas before him. 50 men to run before him. See, because when your sins are forgiven, it looks like you have never done anything wrong. It's high aspiring. Absalom will rise early in the gate, beside the way to the gate. Whenever anyone who has lost suit comes to the king for edition, Absalom will call to him and say, What city are you from? The servant is from such and such a tribe. Yes? Absalom will say, Look, your case is good. All right. But there's no deputy for the king to hear you. Absalom will say, oh, that I was made a judge in the land. Everyone who, ha who has any suit or cause will come to me. Then I will give him justice. Whenever anyone comes there to bow to him, he will put out his hand, take him and say, oh, no, no, ah. it's not, you see, that's why I apologize by Bali during elections. And roasted come Or by play. When they are in office, <laughs> you think it's new? The way of men. Some of you, if you are planning it, and you go, I think private, you remember my dear boy, Ligag. Absalom acted towards all Israel in that manner and stole the acts of the men of Israel. Hallelujah. And you know what? He created a rival kingdom. In verse 13, I want to begin to show you the restraints of David. A messenger came to David and said, The acts of the men of Israel are with Absalom. Verse 14, David said to all his servants who are with him at Jerusalem, Arise, let us flee, or we shall not escape from Absalom. Make haste to depart, lest he overtake us suddenly and bring disaster upon us and strike the city with the edge of the sword. One of the things David was thinking for not staying in the city was not even his own personal safety. If I stay here, I will wreck this city. There are certain people that can wreck anything for their own point. Amas knew what they did in October 7. But they bring the destruction of their people. When they stay at home, David was ready to sacrifice himself and destroy the city. At this point, people say, some people, some people expect that when you say, Absalom is become king. What do you expect David to say? Gather the army. What does David say? Let us go. Let us go. The men of David say, ah, Abba, we are here. We are here. Anything you say, sir. Ah. It's why people who are at Absalom's naming ceremony. Ah. 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 He preserved the physical well-being of the city as against his own personal safety. He kept 10 women in the city to keep his house. If you go to verse 24, 
to 29. As he was going, the priests were carrying the ark and following him. If it is people like us, you say, yes, we are beginning to know our people. Do you know what David said? Look at this priest. He said, are you not the priest of God? Are you my priest? Go back to your duty. He was concerned for the spiritual welfare of the city, that is on. He said, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to show you forbearance. This is a man that needed God to speak at that moment. But he would rather, rather allow God speak to the land than just to himself. Don't worry. All of you that think David is slack. Because David did not need to fight Absalom more than one battle. This David that is moving. Don't fight Absalom twice. It was one fight back. And Absalom was history. Are you following? And I told him, go back. That your men, your small boys can be helping me. You know, when there's information they can send. David looks so much fool. Then, from verse 30, another man came to him. They called him Ushai. Say, Ushai, don't go with me now. Say, if you go with me now, you'll be a burden. First time David is speaking about burden. Kings don't talk about burdens. You'll be a burden. Just go back. Say, then when you go back, you can help me to defeat the council of Ahitophel because I've heard that Ahitophel is within. But the one that struck me most was in 2 Samuel 16, verse 5 to 14. There was a man of Benjamin called Shimei. When David was passing his town, the man came out and began to curse David continuously, not occasionally. Okon, torrent of curse. He said, look at the type of things he was saying to David. Verse 6 now. He threw stones at David. At all the servants of the king. And all the people and the mighty men were on the right and the left. As, as weak as David that was at that time. He had mighty men. Who was Shime? Also Shime said, come out, come out, you blood Asima, you rogue. The Lord has brought on you all the blood of the house of Saul. In whose place you have reigned. The Lord has delivered the kingdom into the hand of your son. You are caught in your evil because you are a blood Asima. Abishai, the son of Zerai, said, why should this dead dog cost the Lord my king? Please, let me go over and take off his head. I would have... It's a long sorrow. David said, you sons of Zerai, let him curse me. Let him curse me. How many of you can allow somebody to curse you? Eh? Huh? And you have power to shut his mouth. They do so you need to last. I saw Molo so you. He said, let him curse me. Let him. He, said, he said, maybe that's what God will even look at. To bring me back. And he was restraining himself. All through those times, I, I perceived the men of David must have been say, This man don't lose. Ah. Is this not the one that killed Goliath? David knew that. Oh no, no, she said. And it was God that was doing it. By the time you, uh, you, you finish that story, in 2 Samuel 16, 15 to 23, Absalom reached the height of divine judgment. Ahitophel told him, there are 10 women in this city that your father left. Sleep with them on the tent, and everybody will know. He didn't know that that was the climax of all divine intention against David. Because immediately he did that one, the chapter of Absalom was closed. Because after that, God had come back to David to say, there's a son coming out of you whose name is Jedediah and his beloved. Sometimes when you have, if God is using you as an object of judgment, of course question is that you might not know when God has stopped. You still continue. You still continue. You say, ah, I don't you say, I don't you say, you see, you have gone further. Now it's your turn. Because it was after that incident, then that, the, that 
Ahitophel said, give me men. Let me go and destroy David. God said, ah, he was in no plan. I was not in the plan. All I want to do is done. And Oshai said, no, that plan is not right. The Bible said, the Lord overthrew the counsel of Ahitophel because as far as God was concerned, the incidents and the use of Absalom was over. If God is using you and you have power over people and you can decide people's lives, be careful. You to have another master. There's somebody else that is pretending what you are doing. And you won't know when that person says enough. But are you hearing me, church, today? <sighs> and the fight back started. Shy overthrew the concern of Ahitophel. Zadok took the message of Ahitophel and sent it to David. And by 2 Samuel 18, there was only one battle. The Bible says in 2 Samuel 18, David called his man and numbered them. And said captains. He's been running from chapter 15. Now in chapter 18, the fight back has come. God is forbearing. God is long suffering. But God has not altered his covenant with David. Are you following me? He has not changed one word he said to him. He, are you following me? So he numbered this man with him, and the man said, He said, and he put them under Joab, Abishai, Itai. And he said, I will go. Those men said, you are not going. You are not going. One battle. The Bible says, the woods, the trees killed more people than soldiers. Where well, I read it. God did not even need David soldiers. Absalom was riding on that one tree. The tree held him. He said, oh, no, no. That means the heart fought for David. You don't get it. Not even men. God used structures. You see, when God begins to fight for you, even inanimate things, decrees, laws will begin to favor you. Because when the tree held Absalom, he didn't know what he was doing. But he was holding a man God has said his time has come. It was a man that came to tell Joab that was looking for him. The tree has arrested him. You don't get it. The How was God's time for Absalom was over? Every time I look at Second Samuel 18 and contrast it to the David that has been running, I can't reconcile it. The David, you know, do you know what it means to run from your son? Ah. Uh, if you run from an anyway, do you know how this 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 daining it was when the sheriff say, "Who is the king running from?" Oh my man, it's enough for you to think the mystery, the mystery of David, the mystery of his person, never returned. It's a lie. Because there was a limit to that judgment. Are you still following me, church? See, never mistake a most tying up. The weakness of God or the restraint of God as slackness. Let me give you another short story. You know, that's what, this story that, that was funny to me is in 2 Samuel 2, from verse 17 to 23. When the men of Saul were fighting the men of David, and the kingdom was about to be taken, there was the commander of Saul's army, they called him Habna. He was a strong man. Then there were three sons of Zeruiah. You know them? Joab, Abishai, and Asai. Their youngest was Asai. And uh, they were gaining victory and they were pursuing. The Bible says, and Abner was running. And Asael, who was, who was a fleet of foot, that is, he, was, he could run fast, was running after him. He pursued Abner. He did not turn to the right. In going, he did not turn to the right or left from following Abner. Look at what Abner said. Abner looked behind him and said, Are you Asael? He answered, I am. 
said, turn aside to your right hand or your left. Lay hand on one of those young men and take his armor for yourself. As I will not, because the guy was looking at us like, I'm running. There's no way you can handle me. He was a man of war there. I've not said to him, but as I, as I will not turn aside from following him. Yes. I've not said again to Asai. Turn aside for for why should I strike you to the guy? As I Yoruba Bible said, You have jumped now. Huh? Say, how would I face your brother Joab? Which means it's not your face I'm looking at. <laughs> There's a way you can be the one pursuing, and you think it is because you are powerful. What was running in Abner's mind was not Asai, it was Joab. So Abner said, said, Turn aside, give me verse 23. For however, he refused to turn aside. Therefore, Abner struck him in the stomach with the blunt end of the spear. And look at the effect of the blunt end. And the spear came out at his back. I'm asking a question. What is the question? If he struck him with the sharp side of the spear, what will happen? It will divide him into several places. He says, sometimes, even if God is fighting with his blunt side, and, and the, that's what the Bible says, the weakness of God is stronger than men. If God even come with weakness, don't mistake it. When God comes with forbearance, don't think you are more powerful. He just, because if he strikes you with his blunt side, what if he turns it to his sharp side? You will not fall under judgment. Amen. I pray for you by the mercy of God, you will not fall under judgment Amen. in the name of Jesus. The Bible told us in 1 Corinthians verse 1, Chapter 1 from verse 18 to 25. He said, look at, look at it. God has taken the wisdom, the wise in their own wisdom. God has decided that through the foolishness of preaching, he will save some. God decided, I will not even use the most powerful tools. I will use the ones you can despise. Preaching. He said, and by the time it was true, look at verse 24 and 25. Verse 24 and 25. He said, for those who are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ is the power and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God, if anything, these are the blunt hands. Like Jesus coming to die on the cross. That's a lion that came as a lamb. But even that blunt end of God is wiser than men. The weakness of God. Because if the blunt head can come out of your heart back, what will be his sharp side? Are you hearing? If the foolishness of the cross has changed the world, what will be if his first coming to die is shaking the world this much? What will his second coming to judge? This art will be dissolved with fire. Father and fire. Are you following me? Say, fire. can you reconcile a man on the cross with father and fire that can dissolve the entire world? Because even his foolishness is wiser than man. His weakness that tired is stronger than man. A summary if God if God is restraining himself don't count it as slackness hey church if there's anything God wants you to repent of don't postpone till tomorrow right now right now If there's any prayer God is calling you to pray, pray it now. Don't say, well, nothing has changed. Things are continuing. No. For the weakness of God is stronger than men. So why don't
doesn't use long suffering. I doesn't use forbearance. The Bible told us in Luke 18, 1 to 8, that there was a, an unjust judge. You remember that story? That a woman used to go to every day. And the woman would say, please give me judgment. And the man would say, come back tomorrow. Come back tomorrow. And the Bible says, at the time, the unjust judge said, if I allow this woman to keep coming, she will worry me. So he was forced to, to do judgment for her. And the Bible said, and shall God not avenge his own elect? Cry out day and night. Have somebody here who has prayed to God on something for so many times times and it's as if nothing has happened it's long suffering of god is not slackness shall god not avenge his own level crowd day and night though he bears what long with them it said it. we avenge them speedy nevertheless when the son of man comes, we live in faith in other words who was on that test here? The woman or the judge. Every time we read this story, we think it's only the woman that is with. God was giving the judge two chances. I invested power in you to give judgment, and I decided not to do it without you. We are postponing it. Every day the judge was giving the woman to come back was the day God was giving the judge to do right. <laughs> you don't get it. Every day the woman was coming back was God's chance for the judge. She said, friend, but she offend you me. Are you still with me, church? There is what the long suffering of God was working on the unjust judge for repentance, but was working on the just woman for patience the forbearance of God will do something in anybody's life whether you are right or you are wrong are you following me that forbearance was acting both on the unjust judge and the just woman James 1 verse 2 to 4 said brethren consider it joy when you fall into various trials I should make you stand up because I don't want to take your time. Knowing that the testing of your faith, what? Produces what? Some of you, God is not calling you to pay to repentance, but he's calling you to what? Patience. So when David was like, was slack. Because the greatest thing David was looking for is how will Absalom change without not dying? Because David sinned. But he did not die. But Absalom refused it until he what? Until he died. The testing of your faith produces patience. Let patience have its perfect work. That you may be perfect and complete. Lacking nothing. Stand to your feet. Romans 5. verse 1 thank you Jesus therefore having been justified by faith we have peace with God through it our Lord Jesus Christ through whom we also have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God and not only that but we glory what in tribulations, in trials, knowing that tribulation produces what? Perseverance. Perseverance, what does it bring? Character. Something is acting on the woman. The woman is learning not out not to take laws into her hands. The woman is learning character. The judge is being given chance to change his mind. Because this one will bring perseverance and perseverance will bring character and character will bring what? Hope. It's a work. You think the David that entered the crisis of Absalom was the same David that came out? It was a David that learned to for God to 
bring justice and to fight. David knew in his heart that this Absalom sequence is part of the divine judgment. And the easiest way when judgment is around your man's life, the easiest way to avoid judgment is to be humble. God give it grace. Don't tell God I know the story. Don't tell God it, 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 uh, but but you 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 let uh, Titi go. Just be telling God, have mercy. Anybody she can conclude, compel or repel. Anybody more she let she. They say, but Lord, uh, there are other people that are not praying that much. God say, God say, you know, God, I'm dealing with you. Just just tell you, have mercy on me. Because when you humble yourself in due time, it will exalt you. Stop fighting with people. Just humble yourself under the what mighty hand of God. But that hand seems like it's pulling you down. But don't forget that hand can pull you up. It can push you down and pull you up. Are you following me? And when he pulls you, the later glory of David was greater than his battles. If you truly repent, you will receive greater help. Help is coming somebody's way. Hope does not disappoint. Because the love of God has been poured out in our heart by the Holy Spirit, which is given to us. The six. For when we are still without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. As if for a righteous man will a one die, yet pass for a good man, someone will even die. Look at it. Continue. But God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. What's the implication of that? Much more then, having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath, from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled, you have jumped. To God through the death of his son, much more. Having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we now have received the reconciliation. When we allow the process and the perseverance to bring character, we discover that God has a greater thing in store for us than whatever the enemy is taking from us. You understand? Because if God died for us when we have seen sinners, what will he do when we have repented? Eh? When we had when when we had not even had any deal with him, it was long suffering. When we have a deal with him, you think he will just cast us away? No. We have entered it into a, into a, a, a cycle of covenant where it is very hard for the enemy to get you away from God's hand. If you continue to submit under God, God will always find his way to bring you to where he's taking you. You could fall seven times but you will rise again. All you need to learn is the ability to not to submit yourself to God. I want you to pray to God this morning and say, Father, I will not despise your long suffering in my life. Pray it up for yourself today. You refuse to despise your long suffering. Many a times it's as if he's absent, but it does not mean he's not there. God can be quiet on an issue for 10 years, just calling for a chance. Turn your mind, change your mind. The forbearance of God is salvation. Salvation. Father, this morning we humble ourselves under your hands. We do not despise your patience, your control, your restraint, your tolerance. We know it's working perseverance, it's working maturity, it's working character in everybody. Character. Character is coming out. We do not despise it in any way. We do not despise it. So Lord, arise. Lord, arise for your people. Lord, change things. Let not you remain the same. We give you praise. In Jesus' name. Two verses we pray. Psalm 78, 62 to 66. And Psalm 76, verse 7. Psalm 78, verse 62. 
his people over to the sword and was furious with his inheritance the fire consumed their young men and their maidens were not given in marriage if there were men in this place what do you call those people cause men they were married family they are young their young men are dying and these were his people their priests fell by the sword their widows made no lamentation then the lord awoke as from sleep how many of you know the lord does not sleep so it's not that the lord awoke from sleep the lord awoke as from which means there is a point in god where god looks asleep or absent that moment is what is called forbearance you will hear him you will see him act you will not react you will think his god is gone somebody wrote a, a, a book god is dead but he awoke as from sleep like a mighty man you will not be able to reconcile his quietness with his power as of a mighty man because of wine what will he do verse 66 he will beat back his enemies he will put them to perpetual reproach question where was he when those people were wasting his young men where was he when their maidens were not given in marriage he was like he was asleep he was the, he was telling them you know when when you know how many of you know those days when you want to when you are running 100 meters with people you know that you will beat we are before 50 meters the person thought he had gained advantage that person knows you are not you say both was one of the slowest starters from the block there are so many races of his that award and i felt he lost everybody half of the way everybody's ahead i said hey you in both guy eight champions lose and suddenly even that famous world record he slowed down and looked back he said the when god arises you will not be able to reconcile his quietness with his strength give me psalm 76 the last one psalm 76 verse 7 you yourself are to be feared who may stand in your presence when once you are angry when he's not angry you will blaspheme him he said who is he you will not repent but when he switches you will not see God's anger you are not ordained to rot you will not come into wrath when once is with some say I can go throw people into lake of fire. <laughs> Mad they know. Make up your mind today that you will never experience it. Because you cannot imagine it. You can't stand in it before him. When once he doesn't get angry every time. But when he switches, air funny. There's gonna be a total difference between that perception you know of him and what you will see and this truth happens every day may you not despise the forbearance of god pray for yourself one more time father help me to respond to your long suffering and forbearance in my life in the name of jesus i will not come into wrath i will not come into your hunger i will not come i will not come you will help me you will help me i will not come into your wrath I will not come into your anger in the name of Jesus. Pray for yourself, pray for yourself, pray for yourself. I refuse to despise your dealings in my life. The areas where you have been quiet, the things you are calling my attention to. Lord, I will not despise your message. I will not despise your message. I make adjustments. The long suffering of God is salvation. The long suffering of God's repentance. I make adjustments. Help me. Help me today. Don't let it wait till tomorrow. Don't let it wait till tomorrow. 
every place I'm indulging myself and indulging the flesh Lord help me to turn to the forbearance of Jesus to the long suffering of Jesus so that the best can come out of my life in the name of Jesus I thank you for your word I thank you for feeding us with food this morning I thank you for that for what is happening in our inner man thank you because out of this meeting character is coming out perseverance is coming out change of attitude is coming out a better person is coming out we are embracing the forbearance of God to walk in us a better person we thank you father for the chance you've given us we thank you father for another time in your presence we thank you for another day in your house we thank you for another time in the presence of your word we thank you because it's working in us for our good both to worry will and to do of your good pleasure we honor you we bless you Jesus. lift your hands and thank you thank you to them Thank you for his love. Thank you for his forbearance. Thank you for his repentance. Thank you for grace. Thank you for grace. Thank you for grace. Thank you for grace. Grace in January. Grace in February. Grace in March. Grace in April. Grace in May. Grace in June. Grace in July. Grace in August. Grace in September. Grace for the rest of the year. We honor you, Lord. We give you glory. We give you praise. For you have done great things in our life. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We worship you. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Give the Lord a big hand of praise, everybody.